Today we're going to be talking about your Forest River Heritage Glen LTZ uh, 356 QB. Basically we'll walk around the outside of it, talk about different aspects of it all, and then we'll work our way inside of it. You want to check that roof about once every 60 days or so. Check all around your roof seams, your roof penetrations. You see anything that's suspect, you want to use a product on there called Dicor. You don't want to use silicone on your roof. You can use silicone on the sides of your camper anywhere, around fixtures and different things like that for waterproofing. Uh, but anything that deals with slides or roof, you want to use Dicor. Uh, your awning, we refer to your awning as a fair weather sunshade awning. Uh, I've got it partially out here. Um, basically, you're just going to roll it out until the valance drops off the end of it and then let go of the switch. And that switch is located inside the unit. It does have... Uh, arms here on the side one in the back and one in the front those are pitch arms basically what that is is you just pull down on that elbow in the middle there and what that does is it adjusts the pitch of your awning what you don't want is you don't want too flat of an awning to where water could pond on top of it and then it could pull the fabric loose from the edge of your camper so you pull down on those pitch arms you can do it in the front or the back you can actually do both of them uh, to basically redirect the water so it doesn't pond on top also we uh, recommend four times when you should be putting your awning away one when it's raining outside unless you're out here supervising it uh, two when the wind gets to blowing pretty good three when you go to bed at night because you can't supervise it and four whenever um, you go away and leave your camper uh, go somewhere during the day or so uh, go ahead and put your awning away also because you can't supervise it uh, anytime you are putting your awning away the roller always rolls under the fabric coming back to the camper not over the top of the fabric kind of the way you see it right now you want to roll it backwards uh, you shouldn't see the white on the outside of the roller you should see that light gray color on the roller when it's all uh, rolled up you have a little kitchenette area back here in the back you got a refrigerator it operates off of 110 110 only you got a light switch here that you can turn this light on and off from inside here um, you have a little grill right here the hose is uh, up here in the cabinet you got a hot and cold running uh, sink back here in the back as well uh, basically you're going to hook to that and there should be a quick connect which there is right located right underneath of there and there's probably a little ball valve there as well that you need to make sure that you turn on also they make a slide spray that you can put on these seals that go around the awning or around the slides and that's to basically kind of keep it uh, from getting dry rotted and cracked do it a couple times a year uh, and such you've got a, a, a tv mount out here on the outside you have speakers out here these are waterproof type speakers just don't spray water directly at them you've got a cable outbound connection here that works off of your antenna on the radio got a 110 outlet right here that outlet is going to be GFI protected so if you lose any outlets around the outside um, or a bathroom or in a kitchen area always check your GFIs because you probably tripped a GFI maybe and that's the reason uh, it's not working you got your fresh air in and exhaust out for your furnace uh, your steps basically uh, have adjustments on them on the legs on the feet and the steps fold up and go inside the door frame and then you just close the door and lift up on this handle and swing it across in front of the door your door itself you can uh, separate the main door the screen door from the main door you have a bolt lock as well your keys the way the keys are set up uh, they're going to be key to like here so the bolt lock and the other one are going to be the same got storage down here in the front that's your light switch to turn on your uh, LED lights on the front end. You do have a little working light also in here for to be able to see. Got a battery disconnect here. Battery disconnect basically turns off all power to the camper from your battery, <coughs> so that you don't. If you accidentally left something on, you wouldn't you wouldn't uh, run your battery down. <coughs> you also have an inverter right here. This is for your residential type refrigerator. Is what this one is for basically what you're going to do is just hit that little button right there um, if you're not plugged into power at the time and you turn and you open up your refrigerator and the lights not on uh, that means your inverters not on and a good way to see if your inverters on is then turn this switch on and if your light comes on inside your refrigerator now you know your inverters running basically your inverter what it does it takes 12 volt power from your uh, battery 
converts it to 110 and provides backup power to your refrigerator. Now keep in mind it won't last forever. Uh, it's designed to basically just kind of get you going there in the beginning. Looks like you got a uh, satellite set up inside here as well. <coughs> this right here is a solar panel jack. So if you decide you ever want to put solar panels on here, the kind that they can set outside and uh, kind of help trickle charge your battery, that's basically what that is for. Located inside of here, in this compartment is where your 12-volt uh, deep cycle marine-style battery is located. Um, again, ways to charge your battery is keep it plugged into electric, um, solar panel, things like that that would help keep your, your, vehicle, your uh, unit trickle charged. Also, while you're driving down the road, Anytime you have your seven-way connector plugged up to your tow vehicle and providing your tow vehicle is providing 12 volt through the seven-way plug, um, you're also trickle charging your battery while you're driving down the road. Keep in mind, anytime you go to plug that seven-way in, I recommend you always turn your tow vehicle off. You shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't uh, make the connection between the camper and your vehicle. Uh, while your vehicle is running you can get us if you do sometimes you might get a little surge between the two and You'll pop the fuse underneath the hood of your tow vehicle and then you won't have 12 volt charging Doesn't mean you won't have tail you won't have parking lights or brakes or anything It just means uh, it won't trickle charge your battery while you're going wherever you're going Got a little work light out here on the outside as well that you can uh, that you can turn on these are battery vents is what these are right here. These are those lights I was telling you about that you can turn on from in that cabinet. Now it looks like you have a second battery located inside this compartment here as well. Um, and that's one vent for that. The other, and I don't know if there's two disconnects unless they just have two batteries and one disconnect. Your spare tire is located in here as well. Your vent information and tire pressure is all lo uh, located here on these labels. This is how you're gonna raise and lower your unit to uh, be able to get onto your tow vehicle. Located in this compartment right here is where your two 30 pound propane tanks are located. Get this door out of my way, control all these doors. This is your selector switch right here. Uh, it's got a little pointer on the side here right now. It's pointing to this tank over here on the left So this tanks open and this tank is closed Typically uh, once this tank is empty, then you can just take this valve swing it around point it this way uh, and Then go get that one filled up Then this is your storage compartment from the other side uh, you've got your uh, wrench here that can uh, run your jacks I believe you can do your jacks possibly in here um, as well this is your water closet in here you can bring hoses and cables and things like that up through the bottom you have park cable connections and satellite connections in here uh, you do have a hot and cold water faucet located right here uh, up here on the top this is your black tank flush Black tank flush is basically to help flush out your black tank uh, up here in the front whenever you're uh, uh, emptying your camper. It's a black tank. Basically what it is, it's a sprayer inside the black tank that will help uh, rinse it out and everything. You, uh, the recommendation is always to make sure that you have your black tank valve open first with your sewer hose connected. Uh, do that first, then hook your hose to this, turn the water on, and start flushing it out uh, as long as you want until you're done and then take and uh, turn the hose off disconnect the hose and then let it finish draining out of the black then you can close the black tank valve uh, you don't want to be running water inside there if you don't have uh, if you don't have the connection open because uh, you run the risk that uh, you could do something to the black tank this is going to be your city water connection here and this is your fresh water your fresh water meaning basically this is your onboard tank uh, whenever you want to uh, fill your onboard tank you're just going to hook a hose to this and turn it on and fill it up until it's full there's probably an overflow hose hanging down underneath the camper it'll tell you when the uh, tank is full turn the water off and 
you can disconnect the hose or whatever it is you want to do the one on this other one is a city water now just keep in mind too when you are using fresh water you're going to use a water pump because it's a water pump's job to suck the water from the fresh water tank through this valve here this is going down to it uh, sucks the water from the fresh water tank and sends it to any and all fixtures in the camper whereas if you're using city water you don't use your fresh water tank pump or you don't use your pump or anything basically uh, what you're going to do because it comes with its own pressure city pressure but you do want to make sure that you do put a water pressure regulator valve on there so that uh, the pressure from the place that you're drawing water from doesn't have too much pressure and it could possibly blow a water line on your camper so that's always a, uh, a concern so they make water pressure regulators like we sell here their factory set at about 50 to 55 psi uh, this line here is for winterization purposes when you're going to suck antifreeze and draw antifreeze using your freshwater uh, tank pump, your water pump, to suck in uh, antifreeze here and you want to take this valve and close it. What it is, it's kind of like a three-way valve. It's kind of forcing it to now suck from here instead of here uh, whenever, you're, whenever you're getting ready to do that. And your hot water heater... Uh, bypass valve is located right here uh, it's in normal position right now basically uh, um, it doesn't allow antifreeze to go into the water heaters what it's basically doing you do have a little working light in here as well that you can use also if you're not real familiar with winterizing unit you know you can always take it somewhere and have somebody do it for you your power cord's a 50 amp power cord. Right now we got a 50 to 30 amp dog bone on it back here because uh, our power out here for us is uh, 30 amps. Uh, so keep in mind, you do have two AC units on this. You want to be on a true 50 plug, 50 amp plug, to be able to run both ACs. Whenever you do something like what we've got right here where we drop down to a 50 to 30 amp dog bone, uh, you can only run one AC, so you got to pick which AC you want to run. You can alternate back and forth, whatever it is you want to do. Um, down here underneath, this is where your uh, pool valves are located for your black tank and your gray holding tank, and, and your probably your fresh water tank could be down there as well, most likely. Uh, typically, you don't haul water to a campground and you don't bring it home. Your hot water heater is both a gas and electric water heater. You've got a switch on the inside probably for both. Uh, you also have a switch located on the bottom left-hand corner of this unit. Uh, and that's for electric. You always want to make sure if you have a switch on the inside for electric, which I can't remember for sure until I get in there, um, you always want to make sure that that switch is on at a minimum. Um, so if you've got an electric switch inside, make sure that this one is on first before you try to turn the one on inside. If you turn the one on the inside on, if there is one for electric, uh, if you haven't got this on, you can turn it on all day and it still won't do anything. Your drain plug is located right in the middle down here on the bottom, got an anode rod on it. Uh, anytime you want to drain your water heater, and this is your high pressure pop off, and these are your high temperature cutout switches. One's for electric and one is for gas. Uh, basically what you, uh, if you wish to, um, trip the safety on those that's where you got to go to to reset them Let's see what else I got under here I don't see anything there all right so back here on the back you also have black and gray tank pull valves so this is another place where you hook your sewer connection to uh, again black is on black tanks, it's the only thing that uh, goes in black tanks is from the toilets. Uh, this one back here would be like a shower, sink, or anything like that back here in this back restroom area. You've got steps that fold out back here on the back to go inside this room here. This is a door that you can use to go into the bathroom as well from here. So, like that shower and that sink and everything would go into the gray holding tank and that would be the gray valve back here whereas the uh, uh, toilet would be going into the black tank. This is your other black tank flush and this is the black tank flush for the rear 
black tank. Just like you had a black tank flush on the front end for the front restroom, this is the black tank flush for the rear. You got steps that can get up onto the roof. That's basically a camera mount if you ever wanted to put a camera on here. These are your stabilizer jacks. You're gonna have one here in the front and basically, or I mean in the back, basically what it is is when you back your camper up, you're gonna level it with the wheels left to right to get your le left to right level as best you can using boards, whatever system or des design you decide to use to get your camper level left to right. Then you're gonna use your jacks up in the front uh, with that switch up in the front that you use that you typically use to get off your vehicle you're going to use that to level your camper front to rear once you got it level left to right and front to rear then you can and this is before you put all your slides out as well you take and push this button drop your uh, um, stabilizer jacks down and basically uh, you can put them onto a board or something like that. You don't have to let them run all the way to the ground. You can, it's, it's best if they can kind of hit something beforehand, but basically let them hit, touch down, and then give them a, just a one little bit of extra goose to uh, kind of stabilize the rear end. They're there for stabilization only. They're not for leveling your camper. They're not for picking your camper up to change tires or anything like that. They're there just to keep your camper from bouncing up and down when you're walking around inside the unit, basically. Turn this light out, starting to sprinkle a little bit out here so I can close this door. All right, I think that's pretty much it on the outside. We'll go inside the unit now. I just basically work my way around clockwise. You got cabinets in here. You got fire extinguisher here at the door. Your refrigerator. Basically the refrigerated box down here. This little knob right here is to screw into this little hole right between the freezer door and the refrigerator door. And that is to keep your refrigerator from uh, doors from like coming open while you're driving down the road. You just put her in there, hit that hole, and then screw her in there. Um, let me take it back out for right now. I'll set it here as a reminder. Uh, this is your switch for your lights over your stove. Your exhaust fan here. And remember there's an exhaust fan damper on the outside. Make sure you pop that damper open whenever you're using that exhaust fan so that the uh, smoke can actually get out. This is going to be your left, your center, and your right burner. This is your striker. Your striker basically just turning clockwise. It's going to light your burners. Um, there you go like that. And then back to off. Your stove, basically you're going to take it to pilot position and then you have to hold it in. When you hold it in, it sends gas down to the pilot light, which is in the bottom, in the back, all the way, all the way in the rear. You light your pilot light, the pilot light lights. While you're holding that down, give it a second to heat the thermal couple, then let go of it. Pilot light stays lit. You can now go ahead and turn the knob on around to the temperature that you want the oven to be at, and it'll turn on the main burner. Otherwise, when you turn it off, it's going to turn the pilot light and the main burner off. Your LP carbon monoxide detector is right underneath the oven. Your breaker panel. For all your 110 resettable breakers and 12 volt fuses is located underneath of there. Here are your keys located right here. All these lights, when I turn lights out, some of these lights are manual. They have little push buttons right in the middle of them that you're going to use to turn your lights on and off. You got a light switch here at the door and then those are going to be manual lights over the bunk area. A ladder to get up onto the bed, place to plug in a TV, and 110 power as well right there. You've got another light over here on the back side of this door. That's a manual light as well that you can turn on and off. The bunk here has a uh, little catch over here on the right that can go into the hole right here to be able to hold this in an up position. Um, but during travel and everything else, for the most part, you want to have that in the down position. That's storage underneath the couch. 
that couch is a jackknife couch pick up on the front end when you do that the back will drop down then when you want to go and bring it back up if you kind of reach back there at the back while you're doing that and pull back this way it'll kind of help you get it back up in the upright position again this is the rear restroom area uh, sink G these outlets are going to be GFI protected as well uh, you got uh, levels telling you how your black and gray tanks are you got a switch right here and that's probably for a light that's on the outside and you've got a light here that turns this light on and there's a exhaust fan you crank that knob around and hit the switch up here on the ceiling to uh, open up and uh, exhaust this area just always don't forget to uh, close that vent cover whenever you're done or otherwise it will uh, uh, rain inside of here as well so I'm going to turn this light off here. Always, whenever you are getting ready to travel too, always make sure that you have closed all your doors, secured all your drawers below, uh, make sure there's no cabinet doors open, and just make sure that you take and get everything powered off and stuff uh, so that when you do run your slides, you won't run into something or break anything. Coming back out here, this is the uh, switch here for the ceiling fan on the ceiling. Uh, you also have a uh, thermostat here that you can choose your set points with. This particular air conditioning thermostat here is for the AC that's right above me here. Uh, you go through your different mode settings right here through this guy. Uh, the first time you push it, it'll just turn the light on. The second time it will then go through your different functions you can choose your fan function snowflake is air conditioning push it one more time goes to heat mode then one more time goes to off and you're using these guys right here for your set points uh, this one's the only one that controls heat this one here controls strictly the air conditioner up in the front bedroom it does exactly the same way fan control uh, air conditioning and choosing your set points your table, kitchen table, you can lift your table up, pull the pedestals out, drop the table down, backfill with the uh, seat cushions and make a bed out of this as well. The light switch to turn this light off and on is located right up on the uh, base there of the light where it goes to the ceiling. This couch here uh, is basically a fold-out couch. You basically take the back cushions off. Um, lift this bed up in the front pull it towards you pull the and fold the legs out on the left and right side set it down the floor then take the back and fold it down and it makes it into a bed as well you've got uh, a radio up here it's an am fm cd dvd and bluetooth player uh, you've got a uh, remote here for it a tv remote got a fireplace remote you also have controls for your fireplace directly on the fireplace itself it has different functions heating functions uh, timer functions as well and probably you can adjust the light since light intensity on it also um, anytime you go to a new area always make sure that you do a channel search on your TV to make sure that you've tuned in to all available stations in this particular area that you happen to be um, your radio is an AM, FM, CD, DVD, and Bluetooth player. Um, basically, you turn it on, or you, um, and it has basically different functions you can use. The zones 1 and 2 up here on the top left. Zone 1 is basically the speakers inside here in, in the unit, and zone 2 is the speakers on the outside. So you can, you can play inside or outside, or you can play both at the same time, totally up to you. Um, you got uh, more storage down in here. Also on your TV, make sure that you have the power booster turned on back here behind the TV. There's a little push button here, and you want to make sure that that button has got a little green light on it. Um, because that's the power for the antenna on, on the camper itself. If you don't have that on, don't do a channel search and don't even bother to turn TV on until you have that on because that's what basically powers your antenna up on the roof. So you want to make sure that uh, you do have that, that all plugged in and turned on correctly. 
up here in the hallway you're going to have your uh, awning controls this is where you're going to bring put your awning in and out this is also a slide right here that you can put your slide in and out you've got this slide and this slide and this slide um, and then up in the bedroom here you're going to have another slide control on the wall in there so basically when I go put my awning in all I'm doing is going to hold the in, hold the button in and roll it up until it basically gets all the way up in position if you did have your awning pitched you want to make sure uh, that when you go and uh, get ready to roll it up that you uh, have unpitched your awning and put it back in its normal position that it should be in Let me get it up here all right now uh, this is your water pump switch right here so this is if you're using your onboard water tank this is your water heater for gas so I don't see a switch for electric so that means the switch on the outside on the water heater in the bottom left corner is for electric this right here is a switch for turning lights on and off here inside and this is probably most likely the awning light this is where you're going to be able to test your battery condition your freshwater tank levels, your black tank, your gray tank one, and gray tank two. Most likely gray tank one is probably the bathroom up here, and gray tank two is probably the, the uh, uh, kitchen uh, gray water uh, for, for the kitchen itself um, is what that one is. Because the tank level controller on the back of the camper in that restroom has a black and gray sensor on it. This right here is a controller uh, haven't seen one of these for a while uh, basically what this does is it uh, can control your awning different functions of your camper basically what I tell people is if you use this to do the different functions that it has then use this to undo those things likewise if you put your awning out with the campers button meaning this switch right here you can't bring it back in with this one because if it was already in it it, it doesn't know it doesn't have it doesn't know the position you're on so you can't put it out with this one and then pull it back in with this one you can put it out with this one and bring it back in with this one so either get used to using this all the time or don't use it at all um, basically when you it happens when you turn it on it just it's going to go through these different uh, functions here and then it's going to stop it's basically trying to learn itself and then what it's doing is it has main slide control it has uh, bed control and wherever you stop it at is where it's going to uh, do things so it has any this th these functions up here at the top are in and out functions these functions down here are up and down functions I'm not even sure if this is working correctly because it doesn't want, I don't see it stopping uh, from uh, doing all its flashing. Typically it, it's supposed to stop flashing so this may not be totally working correctly because um, I don't, it's, I don't have a way to uh, seem to control what, I, what I'm going through. This will uh, time itself out over a period of time or I think you can hold the select button and then it all stops. You also have, uh, let me see where that was, where they hide the smoke here. Oh, there it is, right there above the, the slide, right there is your smoke detector. Uh, your bathroom, basically, uh, the way these toilets work, and this one's going to work the same as the one in the back does, you've got a foot valve on the far side. You push down slightly on that foot valve not enough to open the flapper valve in the bottom of the toilet but enough to kick the water on to put water in the bowl do your business then you're going to push it all the way to the floor flush everything into the black tank and then you always want to finish up by putting a little water back in the bowl like you did at the beginning and that's to do two things keep the seal lubricated one but also to uh, the water serves as a vapor barrier vapor barrier so that you don't get smell from the black tank up into the camper kind of like a p-trap does under a kitchen or bathroom sink or something uh, it's just that's what you always want to keep a little water in there after that uh, you always want to keep chemical in your tanks 
Make sure this little snap is down on your glass door so these doors can't bang back and forth while you're traveling. And this bathroom has the same thing as the other one. Little switch right up here to turn on and crank it open, but make sure you do close it when you're not, when not in use. Um, and then, you, of course, you've got your uh, you got your sink here as well and a medicine cabinet. And looks like this is your GFI outlet right here, and then the switch right here controls the lights inside here. Now, if these do come on, you do have the ability. If you don't want both of them on, you can cycle one of them out. So you don't have to necessarily have both of them coming off if you didn't want them. Again, make sure your bathroom door is closed whenever you're going to actually travel. This is your slide control to put this slide here in and out in the bedroom and a light switch for here in the bedroom to be able to turn these lights on and off. And again, you'll see push buttons on all these lights so you can have it to where you don't have all these lights come on if you don't want them. You can cycle some of them out. <coughs> this is your antenna for up on the roof. Basically what you want to do is it says it here on the uh, knob is to push up and rotate uh, basically in this case counterclockwise and that's to put the antenna down and when you want to go and raise the antenna you push it up and then turn it this way and that's going to uh, basically what it's doing is it allows the antenna to be able to be adjusted in the different directions that it can go it's not raising and lowering the antenna it's just making it directional uh, to help bring your signal in maybe just a little bit better you do have storage underneath your bed you can raise the bed up and You've got storage all the way through there as well. Um, you've got your cl the closet here. It's got sliding doors. They stuck the washer and dryer in here. You always want to make sure that you uh, put this little pin in here to make sure that these doors don't go banging back and forth as well. you got a TV mount here coax connection 110 power there more storage drawers here in the front again always make sure your drawers are all secured uh, and your doors closed prior to putting slides in and things like that as well all your heat's going to be in the floor all your AC's going to be in the ceiling and as your starter kit here other than that, I think that's just about it. This is your cold air return for your furnace. There is no filter or anything in there. The only place you really have filters is in the AC units right here on the sides. You want to clean those every once in a while, pat them dry, and you can stick them right back up. Other than that, that is about it. If you got any questions, feel free to uh, give us a call here at Omens. Thanks, and have a great day.